I can't believe that I'm going to tell one of my most sacred stories on YouTube for the whole world to hear. But here we go. My parents are divorced. Since many years I don't live with my father. And the peak of my sadness about this was when I was 11 years old. There was this Champions League match of my favorite team Real Madrid. And in this period my father was missing a lot from home. Back then, at 11 years old, I didn't realize why. I thought he's just busy or something like this. And at this particular night I was waiting him so we watched the game. We haven't spent any day this week together and I was so excited to spend one night with my papa watching some football. I was sitting at home, the match already started, he is nowhere to be seen. I start watching the game by myself, of course, I'm very sad about this. And I'm still looking at my phone, when is my papa coming to watch the game, as he is still not coming. The first half ends, he's still not there. The break continues, he's still not there. My papa came in the 60th minute of the football game. When he came, I just burst out crying. It's... I carried the story with myself for very, very, very long. But at some point, of course, thanks to self-improvement, to books, to YouTube videos, I decided to forgive my papa. Because there are stories like this one, which happened also on a few occasions. And I had built up this sadness inside of myself that wasn't beneficial for me to carry with myself anymore. That's why one Christmas, just out of pure intuition, I decided to write my papa a letter. A letter of apology and a letter of gratefulness. Ever since this letter, everything between us changed. He said that this was a very emotional moment for him reading this letter and he wrote me a letter back. He never had bad intentions towards me. It's just that our parents are not perfect. Our parents are going to hurt us and it's inevitable. It's up to us to forgive. Because as the Buddha said, being angry at somebody it's like drinking a poison and expecting the other person to die. Forgiveness is the cure to childhood trauma. Forgiveness is the cure to many of our internal problems. And in this video, you should ask yourself the question, can you forgive? Because there is something deeper than just forgiving. I'm going to give you one example. When we were kids, we were playing in the sand a lot, right? Imagine you're playing in the sand and one another guy, little guy, <laughs> is splashing some sand in your face. It gets in your ears and your little guy and you start to cry, you start to get angry at him. But then he tells you sorry. He gives his hand to you and he says, I apologize. Can you forgive me? Can you take his hand? Or you prefer to stay mad? Because this is the essence of forgiveness. This is the essence of what we're speaking about. Because many of us are not able to forgive because we still want to feel wronged. We still want to feel like a victim. There is a certain pleasure that we feel by others wronging us. Because this ultimately, subconsciously, puts us on top of them in a certain way. It's like, he wronged me, therefore he is under me. And we, subconsciously again, like this dynamic. And if we forgive, yes, we're going to have better relationship with these people. Yes, we're going to feel better about ourselves. In a way of more peaceful and lighter. But we like this dynamic. And that's why we're not able to forgive and go on an even level. There is an example in the book that I'm reading, Letting Go. I'm reading it since a long time, but this example is exactly about forgiveness. 
Let's say your neighbor a while back wanted some money from you, like a friend loan. And it's been already two months and he didn't give you the money back. You decide to avoid him, you decide not to go in conversations with him. There is a certain tense feeling between you two. But at the same time, you never bring this up. You never ask him to give you the loan back. In a way, you like this feeling of being wronged. In a way, you like this feeling that somebody is doing something bad to you. You don't ask, but at the same time you avoid. And you kind of prefer this relationship over something that could be better. And you don't even ask, Hey, this and this, I gave you a loan, can you give it back? I need the money. Something like this. But in this book, they gave an example that I would never even come up with myself. And this is that you, in your head, forgive him. Let go of the anger. See this loan as a gift, as if somebody really needed this money and you gifted them. And as you do this, 48 hours later, you receive the money back with a letter. I'm sorry for being late. Apologize. Isn't this crazy? It's a very nice example and that's how the world and the universe works. Once you let go of something, let go of the desire of a certain outcome to happen, it happens to you. In the same way with forgiveness, what else do you expect from other people? Yes, there are two scenarios. In the first scenario, they can openly apologize to you and want forgiveness. In the second scenario, they will not. In the first scenario, if they openly say sorry and apologize to you, there is not there is no benefit to you to not forgive. Forgiveness is the most preached thing in Christianity for a reason. And it's not for the reason that you think, it's not for the reason that you give your power to other people. You give your power back to yourself. Forgiving makes you feel good, not the other person. And the, even the better thing that you can do for yourself to elevate your level of well-being, of spirituality, let's say, is to be able to forgive, not openly, not in front of the other people, but inside of yourself. Forgive without other people even asking for forgiveness. This is so powerful. This is so freeing. This is self-development.